red team doesn't want me in their district. I don't like Guy okay. Lyon. He's totally unsmart. The red district welcome was not very much of a kind welcome. I hate this chain. We had somebody who didn't work. Now we have somebody who works more than they need to. All he does is haul water every day. Oh my god, Mike! Just stayed in the facts. Nathan moves to the beat of his own drummer, but a lot of the time, he just has to go his way. It's like, ugh. Honestly, we can do without Emily. But why do we need Nathan? He sings in his sleep. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Eric here and today I'm back with a brand new Kid Nation interview for you guys. Today I have a pretty distinct guest here. His name is Nathan. He is a Gold Star recipient and he also gets special note because he's one of few characters who was traded from the blue team to the red team. So Nathan, uh, it's definitely a pleasure to have you on, man. Yeah, happy to be here. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, uh, pretty typical question off the bat. How were you cast on to the show? All right. Well, um, so actually all the way through high school with a few exceptions, um, I did take some classes at the, the local high school and um, through tutors and this and that. But for the most part, um, before college, I was homeschooled. And I think the producers had the idea that if, if kids are homeschooled, then their schedules are pretty flexible and therefore um, we can grab them, put them 40 days in the desert, and that's not going to be a problem with their education. Yeah. Um, and for that reason, um, they had contacted some sort of email list that my mother was on. And when they did that, um, they had portrayed it as like kids uh, run their own town. I, though I don't think they said run. It was like design their own town. For whatever reason, um, however they phrased that email, what I got in my head was that this would be a show about um, like city planning. Sure. Like we would, we would figure out where the houses go and then we would maybe do some interior design. Um, so that, that was kind of how I was coming into it. Um, in any case, so my mother gets an email on the email list. Um, and then there was an interview in Chicago. Um, and they asked me basic questions such as uh, what are my hobbies? Um, and I think, uh they i mentioned that i like to sing and i proceeded to sing in the interview and i think that was unusual enough to them yeah. that they were like oh okay this kid he, he's gonna sing for us um all right well, that's uh that's interesting let's let's take this a little further um and so then there were follow-up interviews and um my memory is not so good but i think we went to california for the next round of interviews um and eventually they said you're on so that's how it went yeah that's really cool so you were pretty much brought on because they had somehow heard that you were a homeschooled kid and they just wanted like pretty much to add yeah to add like the diversity yeah, of everything i i think they reached out to homeschoolers because they thought they would be available for that period period of time okay. and then once they saw me interview they thought well this guy kid sings yeah um he's a little eccentric um and my sense is that i was typecast as the weird kid um and why did i have that sense it's because um my mother saw that on a sheet of paper during one of the interviews wow. um, <laughs> so yeah there was some certainly some sort of typecasting going on um but I don't know if it was simply that I was homeschooled, although that could be a contributing factor. Um, probably I was homeschooled. I sang an interview um, and other aspects of my personality. But Right. I, I know it's been a while since you've seen the show. And I before we call, I mentioned, you know, Laurel talking to you. Actually, when she talks to you, they sort of really hone in on the fact that you're a homeschooled kid. Yeah. So this is one of the very few clips of the show that I actually remember. As I mentioned before the interview, I have not watched the show since I was yeah. 12. I've only watched the show once. Okay. And uh, between, so my memory is not strong, but I do remember that one scene. And the reason I remember it is I don't think that um, she said, what's your deep, dark secret? And I was like, yeah. oh yeah, it's homeschool. Because 
I, I feel like that's not really a deep dark secret. <laughs> what probably happened was I said, um, yeah, I don't really have any deep dark secrets. And then a few seconds passed. And I was like, well, I guess I'm homeschooled, um, whether to a follow up question from her or if that was just the best I could come up with. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know if it was I considered it a secret. I don't think I considered it a secret at all. Um, but uh, that was the time when they decided to bring it into the into the audience uh, bank of knowledge. Gotcha. You know, I didn't really get the whole weird angle either because, like, they're like, this guy's weird because he just works, like, all the time. Like, in that scene, everyone's just playing with these new toys they got. And, like, you're the only one doing the laundry. Like, someone's got to do the laundry. <laughs> yeah, so I will say I was probably unusual in the consistency with which I worked. I mean, there were other, not to put anything on anyone else, there were lots of other hard workers there. Um, and I will, won't say that it was just because I wanted the gold star. I think it was the ethical thing to do. And after I won the gold star, I continued to work with the same systematic nature that I had before. But um, I mean, I guess I, I saw us being there with a the mission and that... I felt like if I worked hard, I'd be rewarded for it. And then after I was, I felt like I owed it to everyone else to continue doing that. Um, I don't know if, I think they were probably hoping for more weirdness for me than just that. Right. Um, I think in the episode where I get switched, they're like, oh yeah, he sings all the time, which to be fair was true. Um, not in my sleep though, I think Jared or someone says that. Yeah, he did. Um, a little bit of hyperbole there, but oh. um but yeah, I, that's an angle that they were hoping for from me, and maybe to some extent I got there. Um, so yeah, they did the best they could. You know what is interesting that you brought up, like Jared said, that you sing in your sleep. Actually, in that scene, you know, we're actually all meant to believe that you actually sing in your sleep because he says that we get a picture of your guys' bunk, and it's like in the dead of night, and you're just singing like a falsetto or something, like. I don't know if you remember yeah, that I, from the show. I don't. Am I pictured singing in the bunk? No. No, I, it's from the Okay, outside. so, yeah, I'm guessing they just took the sound of me singing yeah. and interlaid on that scene because I probably went to bed at the same time as they did. I don't think... And who knows, maybe one night I came back late and I was singing, and that's why Jared said that, but my suspicion is that was very much uh, manufactured. Right. Um but yeah, I, I sung a lot then. I sing now, so I wouldn't be surprised if I annoyed someone. But they were hyping that up. No one ever came to me and said, "Hey, Nathan, you sing too much." Yeah, no, um, that I wasn't really a thing. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't really a thing. Um, but they made it a thing, and sure, whatever. So, um, you know, how would you describe your experiences uh, on the blue team? Uh, they were good. I like being on the blue team. I think, um, as I mentioned before the interview, I don't keep in touch with folks on the show very much and and having not watched it in a long time i don't remember a lot of the guys who were on there the only name that i remember particularly being on the blue team was alex because um i considered him my my friend on the show right. um, when i started so i think being moved from the blue team was a little sad for me because i liked the home of being the, on the blue team but um i also was fine with the idea of helping out another team that needed help and uh, appreciated the recognition that people thought i would be helpful to be moved um so yeah, I was I was happy with the blue team. Right. Yeah. I mean, so I've talked to other people about Alex, and they've said like you know it's pretty hard to become friends with Alex, uh, for whatever reason. Like, how, do you remember how a friendship struck up between you and Alex? Yeah, um, not really. And I would say say that after I moved, I mean, I think um, he's probably more introverted than I am. And I don't remember. I don't know if you asked him if he would say we were friends um, not, or maybe he would. I, I haven't got a clue, but um, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't play this up to be a larger friendship than it really was. But I do think we, um, he seemed like a nice guy and, and we were in our, in each other's vicinity being on the same team. Um, what else? Uh, do we have any, do I remember anything specific? I think we both like Bionicle. If that's... Oh, Bionicle. Okay, Bionicle's yeah was lit i remember yeah, that was the thing the same age fourth grade by uncle's lit rest in peace by uncle it's shut down now I don't, I don't yeah know it's very tragic um, yeah but uh no i really um i remember thinking he was nice and he was nice to me but beyond that i don't know um how close we got and how i got there but i i considered him a friend 
Right, okay. Um, I think the show's portrayal actually sort of goes on to say that, like, you guys were best friends on the show, and when you get traded off, Alex seems pretty visibly upset, but I don't know how the, all the editing went for that and everything, but... Yeah, and like I said, my memory of this is is very bad. So, <laughs> yeah. um, I'm I'm not casting doubt on what the show portrayed. Um, yeah, I, I liked Alex, and I was sad to be traded, but I recognized the legitimacy of the move. I guess. Right. So, um, one figure in particular that I hope you didn't forget about was um, Greg. Right. I mean, there are a lot of scenes yep. of him bullying you, and then he actually apologized to you in the same episode. Um, you know, could you tell me a little bit about, like, what that was like? Was that, like, constant? Were he trying to belittle you and stuff? Or was that... Um, yeah, so I think, uh, I, like I said, I I don't remember this very many specific things, so I don't remember exactly what that belittling was like, but it was legitimate. I mean, it did occur. Um, and so I think he teased me, um... And I would say whatever you, if it shows any of it on the show, it's probably representative of what it was like. But um, but actually the uh, apology, so the apologies you see on camera actually um, had already occurred. Okay. So he came and apologized to me uh, leg- legitimately. Um, I don't know whether uh, that was out of his own initiative or what, what um, brought it on to him to, to apologize to me, but he did and I appreciated it. Um, and somehow the uh, producers heard about it. Um, oh. And then they were like, oh, this is great stuff. How about you apologize to him on camera? So we reenacted the apology. Gotcha. Um, yeah. So um, if it seems a little staged or odd, I, I'm sure the real apology was a little awkward too, but um, that was the second time he'd apologize to me because when he did it for real, um, it wasn't on camera. That's very interesting. So on top of that, you know, after he apologized to you, would you say that your you two's relationship genuinely improved, or would he ever go back to like um, be letting? I think I think stuff? it did. I don't remember. I feel like I would have remembered if if that apology seemed empty because it was followed up by um, further stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not. I wasn't used to getting along with everyone at that age anyway, um, and I think I appreciated the thoughtfulness um and yeah i I don't remember anything happening after that point um yeah okay that's great um so actually michael from the green team made an ama on reddit and Mm -hmm. in his ama he actually recalls that you like um you know one of your biggest contributions was actually hauling water you'd haul tons of water like every day um, you know, just to put things in perspective, how much time do you think you devote to like calling water every day? Oh, um, whatever Mike remembers is probably more accurate than what I would guess. Um, but, um, I do remember hauling a, a fair bit of water. Um, and I, I remember washing dishes and doing laundry. I, I suspect, laundry was my second most common task after yeah. hauling water but how much time i spent to each other i couldn't tell you i mean um i do th- yeah i spent a lot of my day doing it but um but a reasonable amount i don't think i overworked myself or yeah and there were other there were other people who were contributing there too i um but yeah go to mike <laughs> <laughs> whatever he says is true um, so, you know, at one point, I don't know if you remember this either, but this was, like, highlighted in the show a bit, when Sophia actually becomes the, like, sheriff of the town. Mm-hmm. Uh, that sounds familiar to you? Yep. Okay, yeah. You seem to be, like, pretty upset about that. Um, how did you actually feel about, like, Sophia becoming, like, the sheriff of the town? Well, uh, this is one where, again, I wish I had watched the episodes before the interview. I do remember that I didn't like that happening. But unfortunately, I don't remember why. I think it was because, and I think maybe you can fill in the gaps in my memory as to how she became the sheriff, uh, but... Yeah, okay, so basically, um, the four council leaders, basically is Greg, Blaine, Michael, and DK. They're all council yep. leaders. They have to take a few-day break from the whole town. And then out of pretty much out of like Greg's head, he just says, okay, Sophia's the leader while we're all gone. Yeah, so I guess um, 
probably my thought process was something like um i think she rubbed me a little bit of the wrong way as kind of a, a bossy figure that um I didn't. I felt felt like we had elected or had some process in choosing the four elect the four leaders, but that we hadn't we hadn't voted for for Sophia, um, yeah. and so in that sense, it seemed a little de- democratically illegitimate. It was like, um, I guess, I, and I, like I said, I don't remember how this happened. So maybe I guess the council members chose her. So there is a sense of delegation of authority. But to me, it was like, oh, sh- this person is not who we voted for. She came out of nowhere, um, and I guess I, I'm not questioning i don't i don't remember the show and i would question my 12 11 year old judgment anyway yeah. but um but at the time my perception of her was um well-intentioned but a little bossy and uh, i i felt like it was uh, unfair that she was elevated to the authority right i think i think you're mostly accurate i mean even sophia herself said that, said that she's bossy you know at least during the show so i can understand that yeah, which is not to say that um, whatever decisions she was making were totally bad, but I guess I didn't necessarily agree with all the decisions she made, or at least I felt like she shouldn't be the one making them, even if they were legitimate decisions. Sure. So when you get traded to the red team, I mean, the red team has almost an explosive reaction, you know, like Jared threatens to kill Guilin, <laughs> you know, like it's it's a really explosive thing. Uh, Markel's angry um and i think i think some other people were upset as well i think mike mike was really angry um you know and this had enough like you weren't involved in that decision either so how did you feel about like you know joining the red team when most of them were not really keen on having you having you there um well i guess what i would say uh, and maybe maybe the show contradicts this but i don't remember getting that sentiment to the same extent. So I don't know if that's something they expressed in private, but didn't say to my face or whether they said it to my face, but I just got over it pretty quickly. Um, But I think for the most part, while they might not have been happy with um, the trade um, event, and it it took a few days, but I I eventually felt at home there, um, maybe not as strong of a connection as I had in blue. um, And certainly um, I think there was a little bit of a of a hump to get over there and i don't know if i if, if everyone meshed with me but um but it wasn't like i thought oh gosh i'm stuck with these people that i don't want to be with and they don't want me in and, and i hate this okay. um if if they had those sentiments they hid them pretty well or um or we just got over it it worked right. out okay i think i think most of them did it like to guyland in private or within the red bunk that would make sense. I, if I if I recall correctly, I think Mike did get kind of upset with you, uh, and then he actually apologized directly to you. If that maybe that's what, yeah. why I don't remember. I'm like, this is taken care of. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, there were some clashes, I think, but it, it all worked out in the end. We 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 figure stuff out. Sure. And if it were up to you, would you have wanted to stay with blue or uh, red? If it were up to me um, and it didn't make a difference for the town as a whole, I would have chosen blue. But I think I understood the logic of, you know, this team needs help, this team doesn't. Um, let's do the swap. Like that was, that seemed sound to me. Gotcha. Um, but, uh, but if it were my choice and if it didn't make a difference for the group as a whole. I would have preferred to be in blue. I, I had had an attachment to the people on the blue team. And also it's kind of like, you know, you're rooting for one sports team and they just switch you over to your rival. I mean, you've been, <laughs> you, you've yeah. been having, you've been trying to help the blue team win during competitions. Um, and suddenly you're not on the blue team. That uh, feels a little odd, but um, yeah, I just rolled with it. Gotcha. So, I mean, you were um, at the result of like, you know, at the receiving end of a lot of council members' decisions, is there anyone that you would distinguish as, like, the best council member? No. Uh, to be honest, the council seemed, was not a very transparent body to the kids. I mean, it, um, and I, to this day, having not really watched interviews of other cast members, um, 
I don't, it, it felt like the council, you know, just went into a room, did some sort of negotiation with the producers. I, I'm not sure the extent to which the councils made their decisions or were told their decisions, but you know, they, they were off doing their thing and then we learned what they decided. And that, so who was a good council member was really hard to say because you weren't there when they were negotiating. So maybe they made a decision and it was mostly three out of the four, but the fourth guy didn't agree. Well, who was the fourth guy? You don't know. Um, I, I remember thinking that the, the $50,000 gold star awards were questionable that, um, and I don't remember if I, I don't think I necessarily originated this theory, but at least I remember one person suggesting that people were just the guy, it was just the guys giving it to the girls they like or something like that. Like it wasn't, um, it wasn't thought out solidly, uh, which is not to say that I would have been a candidate for any of those, but rather that I was just like, well, um, is that the people I would have awarded those to? That, that seems like a little, it's more like these people might've been good candidates for the regular gold stars, but you're out of those or, um, so that was the one decision I remember that I thought was questionable. It was like, eh, I wouldn't have chosen those individuals for the 50,000, but um, had I been in their shoes, would I have made a better choice? Hard to say. And like I said, I it was so opaque, um, whether it's because I was off working and missed the gossip or, um, I think to a large extent it was opaque. They were just making their decisions off somewhere else. Yeah, definitely. And to that, uh, like the theory behind you know them giving it to girls they like, there there's a little bit of a producer interference as well, where um, you two of the stars could only go to either council members or someone who won the gold star before. So um, interesting. That, el that eliminated a lot of people. And the third gold star was to Miguel from the blue team. I don't know if you yeah. remember her. So Miguel was this, in particular was one of the ones that, um, as a kid, I thought was not a good decision. Now, obviously, being in my own little world, I could have missed very good reasons for Miguel to get it. And I'm not uh, at my current age saying that she shouldn't have. But when, at the time, I thought. Um, not knowing her well and from what I had seen in the village, um, it was just like, oh, she didn't really do anything for the town the entire time. Then the day before they, the, a couple of days before they made the decision, she started baking goodies for people to eat. And then it was yeah. like, oh, now let's give it to her. I'm like, well, okay, you're basing it on not the entire four days, but the last couple of days and she made some good things to eat. That just doesn't seem like the right decision. Um, but maybe I missed, maybe I missed something. There could be a bigger right. picture, but no, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, Michael said in his AMA that, uh, it was cause Greg and Blaine and DK all sort of kind of liked Miguel. And then I asked DK about it and he said hormones might've. Yeah. In, so in, in even case. as an 11 year old, that was <laughs> the theory that someone had suggested to me, or maybe I came up with on my own. There was definitely the sense that this was someone who didn't really deserve it had that, um, was attractive to the guys who were on the council in some sense and had made some good things to eat and they're like okay give it to her and so they're like well hold a second that's that's not how you should be handing those out but yeah. um was i uh upset about it not really it was just like oh well they made a questionable decision i mean i don't think that i would have necessarily been the fifty thousand dollar cannon anyway so it was kind of like i didn't have any skin in this game but um and then as far as the producer interference i don't think we knew about that at the time so um was it the sophia they got a fifty thousand? uh yeah sophia morgan and Miguel got fifty thousand gold stars yeah um i think i would have also questioned sophia for the same reason that it seemed like she she was giving a lot of credit for her efforts as a sheriff but i didn't think she should be a sheriff in the first place so it was like all right well now she's getting another thing yeah. Um, and then Morgan, honestly, I, I don't remember much of, of, of any thoughts I had on that decision. I think I probably didn't interact with her enough to question it. So, um, that might've been a good decision. Who knows? And, um, and I'm not, uh, my bias against Sophia may have been to some extent, uh, illegitimate. So it's mainly the Migley one that I remember latching onto and thinking, wait, what's going on here? Sophia was like, okay, well, you know, I can see her getting another thing. She's been sheriff. Now she gets a 50,000. That's par for the course. And then Morgan, I, I, I'm not sure. But when all three were girls and then all, the camp council was all guys, I was like, yep, yeah, we, we <laughs> see, see what happened here. But um, yeah, that's all I have to say on that. Sure, sure. Um, when it came to showdowns, were there any that you particularly liked or disliked? 
this is another example where um, I should have watched the shows again because I don't really remember any of them um, except for like something where we had to relay a message over when there were towers and then there was something about pigs and something about beans and it's all oh, a wash. Oh yeah, I, um, think, I think you might be mixing a few together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I'm I'm intended to have cited a few there, but um, I'm not really. I those are examples of challenges I vaguely remember as to which were my favorites or least favorites. Um, if you name a few, I can try to give you a sense for whether I liked them or not. But yeah, um, sure. So off the pig and the bean one, that was one where you had to like dive into like beans and pretty much. Yeah. Like, that's like poop. one of two I remember. Yeah. Um, I honestly, I, I think they were all fun. Um, I never thought, oh, this is, I mean, I guess fun is questionable in some cases, but I mean, it yeah. was a challenge. It was a competition. I've always been about competition and um, enjoying striving for the win. So um, yeah, I mean, they were all, they were all right. Um, honestly, I evaluated them more in the sense of like, how good were the prizes than how good was the competition? Right. Um, what did you think of like the prizes? Were there any that really stuck out to you as like really, you know, nice or any that you missed that kind of bothered you? I don't remember the ones we missed. Um, I remember occasionally when it was always like, Hey, here's the, the right decision. Here's the wrong decision. Let's watch the kids make the wrong decision. Like the productive option and the fun option. Um, I always was rooting for the productive right decision, but um, <laughs> which was, I, I think now looking back on it, I, I have more sympathy for the choosing the fun option, but um, I don't, I remember getting the, I think once we chose like clothing and those, we got like some Western button down shirts. I thought that was a good call. And I remember um, I taking, I mean, I, we kept the clothes after the show. So I had some nice Western shirts for a little while. Nice. Um, the only other one I remember is the hot air balloons and that that was a, a fun experience. Oh, yeah, that I did hear about that. That was a lot of fun. And yeah, oh, sorry, I was going to say, for, for whatever reason, I remember at the time being, I th was that was the alternative on that one, like a monument? Uh, yeah, a rock. Yeah, a rock. And I remember at the time, <laughs> um, and now looking back on it, I, I obviously should choose the hot air balloons. But I was like, oh, yeah, you know. It does seem like we should we should memorialize this, and like it was a hard decision. It was like fifty fifty, um, <laughs> and um, I probably could have been sold on the memorial. But now, like we were at least I was always for at least half the show not really sure if it was a real ghost town or a fake ghost town or or a real one that they had modified or expanded or yeah. maybe they refurbished a legitimate ghost town. So I thought that this was like an actual place of some importance, even if it was um, commandeered. And thinking like, oh yeah, put a moral there. That's kind of fun. But now knowing that it's just like a, a set, uh, no one's gonna watch that memorial. <laughs> so yeah. hot air balloon is definitely the, the good call. What is interesting, um, actually, eight months probably after the show ended, it sort of was like, okay, we aren't doing a season two. They actually put that rock there, and then opened it up for tours. So there's actually a few pictures floating around of people uh, with pictures of the rock, actually. Yeah, so. I mean, that, that doesn't surprise me. Well, are you going to haul that rock someplace else? I mean, <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. And I, I think now that you say that, that at some point, whether on the show or afterward, I eventually learned that we ended up getting both. So I guess that worked out. Um, yeah. Gotcha. Um, what was your experience with producers on the show? Would they ever, like, uh, bother you? Nope. Um, I think I had respect for the producers. I, I, I think I was wary of the producers in the sense that I knew it was all going to be filmed and, um, I didn't want to be typecast. So when I was on, I, I ignored the cameras as you should. Um, but when I, you know, what, like in, like in Kidnation or Survivor, whenever they have the cut scenes where like they're interviewing one person. Yeah. Um, as opposed to they're just watching scenes play out. Um, and so that's when they had trucked us off to this producer camp and they were doing those. Whenever I was being asked questions, I was always thinking like, what's their angle here? Like, what do I want to appear on a TV show in, in a year? But, um, but other than that, I mean, I assumed they had good attentions and they seemed to be helpful enough and, um, and stay out of the way for the most part. I mean, obviously they did, they did, talk to you it wasn't like they weren't there they like i mentioned with greg's apology um it was like hey oh we missed that can you do it again 
Um, and they would certainly, if they saw you doing something interesting, they would be clear about wanting to get it on camera. Um, for example, in, in a, which is pretty ironic because I'm, uh, so bad at remembering what happened, having not watched the show in so long. But, um, I remember at one point I was writing down like a, um, in the last few days there, I got the sense like we should memorialize what happened. So I've made like a diary of, Hey, this is what happened on day one. This is what happened on day two. It was very detailed. And yeah. then the producers were like, Oh yeah, we, we see you're doing this, you know, can we look at it and can you talk about it so we could feature it? They didn't end up using it. I don't think. Um, and then when I got home, I, I hadn't yet completed it. And my dad said, Hey, uh, you should finish that diary thing because in a couple of years, you're not going to remember this. And I was like, Oh yeah, I'll get to it. I'll, <laughs> I'll remember. And of course I didn't finish it and don't remember. So somewhere I could dig that up and I'll have a very detailed account of like a quarter of the show. And that would be wow. it. The diary is still around. It lasted. It's somewhere in some attic. Um, but like I said, I didn't finish it. So it, it would be, yeah. it would not be very useful to, to this interview or to my memory, but wish I had finished it. Yeah. No problem at all, man. Um, you know, speaking of Greg from like a little while ago, at one point he actually becomes like a town council leader mm -hmm. at that point, you know, like that was only, um, I think at that point, actually, you guys still weren't on the best of terms. I think that's before the apology, at least in the show. So how did you feel about Greg becoming a town council leader? Um, not remembering how I felt about it. I can speculate. I probably would have thought, yeah, he doesn't deserve to be a town council leader. But to be honest, I, I not only were the town council leaders opaque, but they were always kind of a lost cause in my mind. Um, because when we arrived there, remember the producers chose the initial council leaders. So yeah. it was like, we're here and here's your authority. Um, which is kind of, which is ironic given that this is supposed to be kids building their own town, but it didn't even start as a democratic thing. Um, I guess, I, to be fair, I mean, if we didn't know each other, how would we have voted our initial leaders? But um, but we can't, We started with people that we didn't choose and that we didn't know telling us what to do. And then um, eventually we voted and some other people ended up um, telling us what to do. And maybe my favorite candidates didn't win the vote, but yeah. um, because they, it was such an opaque and... And maybe it's more opaque for me than others, like I mentioned, since I was very heads down doing the work. Um, but it just wasn't relevant to me. I was like, "Hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be washing dishes. I'm gonna be hauling water either way, because um, that's the right thing to do to help the town and also maxes my odds of getting a star. And so, does it really matter who's in charge? Um, not really, even if it's not um, someone I would prefer to have in charge." Yeah. Um, do you? So you know, going back to uh, you mentioning that the council members weren't really chosen or elected did you feel any type of way when like so you guys get this long bus ride over to bonanza and the town council just gets helicoptered in kind of out of the blue and <laughs> there's really like sand blowing all over you guys um i mean d is that sort of where it started was like you know like who are these guys why did it get this special privilege and blowing sand on me uh yeah i mean i guess i just had an a optimistic outlook on on the show i mean i it was a privilege to be there i mean how, how many kids get to be on a reality tv show um and um it was an adventure it was i mean i i was in a different state in a desert getting to do my own thing my parents weren't there um so yeah i mean a helicopter that's surprising i guess but it's it's also fits the fun and exciting theme i'm like well okay now there's gonna be council members and i just kind of i just accepted it um yeah i, I mean i probably would prefer to be on equal terms with everybody else but i wasn't I, I didn't really care yeah um do you still keep in touch with anyone from the show i do not i'm facebook friends with a number of the people who are on the show and i think of every now and then i don't go on facebook often but um at least not for the main feed more for messages and groups but um every now and then i'll see a post and i think a, a couple years two three four who knows a few years after the show we had one reunion that i attended that was um uh, okay. maybe like five to seven people from the show but since then um i have not spoken to any of them or reached out um which is not to say i have i mean i feel like if i were to shoot one of them a message now they would respond politely and um be friendly um but I just, you know, I, I have people I know in real life and um, I didn't end up close enough to any of them that I felt like I really need to um, keep this going. Yeah, I understand. 
Um, how about if they were to do like, uh, you know, if CBS were to host a reunion or something, or even like a uh, adult nation type of show, is that something that you'd be on board to do? Yeah, I think I'd be on board. Um, yeah, I have a, I have a hard time seeing the a kid nation uh, two with kids, given how much um, mixed press I got. Um, yeah. Although as a kid, I fully supported it and would have done it again. Um, and as far as an adult kid nation, I feel like it would be hard for that to compete with real adult reality shows like Survivor, especially given that the ratings and viewership uh, for kid nation, to my knowledge, never, never got that up there that far. Uh, but if for whatever reason that existed, I would definitely participate. Yeah. Okay. That's awesome. And you are right. I think the most amount of viewers Kid Nation has was on its first episode is about 9 million. And yeah. to put that in perspective, I think Survivor at that same year got about 15 million. Yeah, so it, it wasn't it wasn't the biggest hit. They uh, and you you probably know this, but they ended up uh, reshowing the episodes in various foreign countries to try to make up. Uh, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so I, I don't know all the places it showed, but um, and this may not even be one of the places, but it was like, oh, now they're showing in the Philippines. And the way the way I. Um, uh, the way I know this is because as a kid, I suddenly got 20 Facebook friend requests from this random country. And then I'm now getting 20 Facebook friend requests from this, from this other country. Um, and uh, so I have a lot of outstanding Facebook requests that I have <laughs> never yeah, answered, sure. but, um, but yeah, they, it's hard for me to see a reunion or a sequel happening, but um, I enjoyed the first one so i would be there for the second okay sweet um i actually do kind of remember hearing something about it, just because there's a lot of international people in like the kid nation community for a very american show you know yeah so that that definitely yep uh, that's why they sense. they needed to make a little bit more cash out of it so yeah um so what are you up to now these days um, well, now, let's see, I'm going to go back a little further than now to start. Um, right after Kid Nation, I went to a choral boarding school in New Jersey um, for one year, which is where I saw the episodes. Um, after that, I very briefly went back to my hometown in Mount Prospect, Illinois. Um, but then my family moved to Michigan because my father worked for the Kellogg Company um, making oh, cereal. Um, Battle Creek. Yes, that's right. So I, so I went to Michigan, stayed there through high school, um, went to Carleton College in, in Minnesota. Um, and then um, right now I, I took a job um, over for the past couple of years in the Chicago area. So I'm back close to where I was raised um, in uh, Elmhurst, Illinois. Okay. So, yeah, I'm uh, doing um, I'm a supervisor at an industrial supply company and i um, at some point, I'll probably go get my MBA. But other than that, um, you know, I'm just regular work life here. Um, happy to have the 4th of July weekend off. Um, yeah, I, my degree was in economics, but what I'm doing now has uh, remote connections to economics. So. <laughs> okay, okay. I mean, that's like, at least right here, this is all like jobs, you know, it's not really that yep. close to college. Yeah. So, um, you know, how would you rate your overall Kid Nation experience? Um, nine and a half out of ten. Oh, okay, sweet. That's that's awesome. And I hope you got some big bionicles from that uh, Kid Nation money. I no, I never saw a penny of it. So, uh, oh. um, I think what I said in the show is that you know I'll use this for college, mm -hmm. which is, um true in the sense that um the I, my, my, the money went to my parents given my age and then uh my parents uh just to, to some degree helped me with my college so um yeah yeah well, i mean that um, could be more rewarding than a bionicle and yeah i mean things. education is important <laughs> um uh i will say though at, at, as a kid i thought it was a, it would be a great idea to get the gold they offered you like that amount of money in actual gold or mm -hmm. uh, or the money itself and um i was press, pressing pretty hard for the gold and um i can't remember it i i remember hearing that like one or two people 
at most chose the goal. It was was Alex one of them? I don't know why I'm, I'm thinking that. I'm sure Alex was. He uh, made a pretty big deal about uh, keeping it as goal. Yeah, I, I think he may have been the one or per second. Well, I was uh, right there with him advocating for the goal. Then it, um, then we had the uh, the Great Recession. So um, had they listened to me, but not not that <laughs> I, I knew what I was talking about, but it would have right. been a, a lucky guess. Um, but no, and then of course after taxes, I'm sure it was a lot less than than twenty thousand. Um, yeah. And then we also got five thousand um, for just being on the show. So. Okay. Yeah, I actually wasn't sure because I, I know everyone gets five thousand just for appearing, but that that stays in tech. It's a five thousand stipend that everyone gets regardless of like gold stars and everything, right? Yeah. So it's five thousand, and then if you got the gold star, that makes it twenty five thousand. Exactly. And so after tax, I don't know, fifteen thousand, sixteen thousand. I mean, obviously, it, it was my parents' income, so it would depend on what brackets that might be shifted around, but. Um, and who knows how I, I, I'm not a tax expert, but it was, yeah. like I said, I never saw it, but, um, it did go to my parents who helped me out later in life. So, um, I think that's, that's legitimate. Definitely. Well, Nathan, I mean, it was an absolute blast to have you on. I'm really glad. I, I feel like you knew your, uh, Kid Nation lore better than you, uh, gave yourself credit for to be honest. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe, uh, I guess I should go back and watch the episodes. I'm sure that would jog my memory a little bit, but, um. Yeah, I'm glad I do remember something. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it was a pleasure to have you on. And, um, you know, I really appreciate uh, you coming on, too, especially because, uh, you know, you're not, like, super into Kid Nation and stuff, you know. So I definitely really appreciate it. Man. Yeah, happy to be here. I mean, um, yeah, I just had Kid Nation and I, I moved on. But I liked the experience and, yeah, happy to answer yeah. questions. Great. So, yeah, I hope you have a great 4th of July. And, uh, you too. You know, hope you have a good rest of your day, man. Appreciate you it. You too. Thanks. Yep. Take care.